Greetings from the United States and from Meghalaya. <laughs> it's, it's great to have a foot in either country and to, uh, to be, um, like many of you, citizens that have traveled the world and have a wonderful perspective on our world and our lives nowadays. Um, I've been asked to speak about my father's convictions and his um, life, mainly about his change and what brought about that change in him uh, that brought us to Asia Plateau uh, to celebrate this amazing place, which I think is a spring of great knowledge uh, and great heart. And I, I know many of you have experienced this. Um, The main problem with me is I'm very emotional. <laughs> so you'll bear with me if I can pull myself together. Um, first, I wanted to make sure that you all know I've um, been able to greet many of you. It was almost, it was more than 40 years ago that I first came here when I was 11. And I left, um, um, and I didn't come back uh, for many years. We, we, we kept coming and going, and it was wonderful for us because it was this great train journey across India, and it was third-class train, which some of you may have experienced is quite a, a, a feat to come all the way from Northeast India to Mumbai, and then my favorite part of the journey was Mumbai to Pune, which has this fabulous train trip up the Western Ghats. Anyway, my mother, Helen Nicholsroy, sends her love and best greetings to all of you. She would have been here if she could. She's 93 and uh, failing a little in health uh, and memory, but she still remembers everyone fondly. And also from my uh, sisters, Marianne, Cynthia, and my brother, David. They all said to give you their love and best wishes, and I'm hoping I'll give it to you all personally later. <laughs> so the, the main thing is um, when my father met um, Raj Mohan Gandhi, and Uncle Nikitu and uh, Uncle R.D. Mathur in Delhi in 1967, I think it was. Um, a friend invited them over for dinner, and that's where my father met these three wonderful gentlemen. And uh, his whole life was changed because he heard the story of Madame Irene Lohr, which I know many of you know and will uh, find out if you don't. That's the, the point for question and answer time. And he was stunned by the way she had gone around Germany asking for apologies from people that had actually wronged her, but that she realized her little part of wrong was what she wanted to ask their forgiveness for. And my father said, you know, I need to do this in my own life. So he came back home and the change in him was amazing. And I was only... I don't know how old I was. <laughs> I was maybe 10. But what he told us made us all cry, of course. We're an emotional family, I guess. <laughs> and he apologized to my mother and to all of us for not spending enough time with the father, even though he had a very busy life. Um, and he said, I want to change our whole life, and I've met these wonderful people. And next year, I want to take a choir to this place called Asia Plateau. And uh, he brought 30. 35 people, I think, from Northeast India. The Kasis are well known for their singing as well, just like the Nagas and the Mizos. And he got this great choir here, and <laughs> thank you. And um, I wasn't here, but I did come the next year and had the great fortune of, of running around and being with all wonderful people here and learning about the inner voice and how it had changed my father. And uh, he then went on, and he had been fighting for many years. It was almost 10 years, I think, they fought for uh, their own state that would be built out of the state of Assam. Assam was a great state in the Northeast, and out of it have carved these other smaller states. And they were not allowing uh, the state of Meghalaya to be formed because, you know, they wanted the power, etc. And it was very difficult, and many other people in the region had gone violent. And my father was very worried that this was the way that was going to happen in Meghalaya as well. At that time, we were just called Assam. So the, the people of the Kasis, the Kasi tribe, the Jaintia tribe, and the Garo tribe said, we want to form our own state out of Assam so that we can help our people. And he went to the chief minister at the time, who he knew well, because my grandfather had fought 
and uh, for the state as well, and then started the movement many, many years before, um, after the formation of India. And so he went to him and he said, uh, you know, I'm a tribal leader for the Kasi people, Jaiji people, but I realize I've not been thinking about you, the Assamese people, even though you're the dominant group here. You must have so many concerns that we're not thinking about and we're not caring about, and I want to apologize for that. And this was amazing to the Chief Minister Chaliha to hear this Kasi leader who they had been tussling back and forth for, for 10 years to try and uh, figure out how to inform the state. And he said, you know, that's the first time somebody like you have spoken and that's leadership. And that he in turn shows the great leadership and saying, I too have not thought of all your tribal concerns and we think of things differently, but I'm sure there's some way we can compromise and come together and figure this out. And that's how the change happened between these two men and others who followed and also were brought to Asia Plateau through my father, bringing them here. And um, another was a, a Kasi leader who had come and who was definitely going more the way of the violent, violent uh, activities. And he was also changed when he came to Asia Plateau. And so Megalaya was formed in around 1971, I believe it was. And a group from uh, MRA at the time, uh, Initiatives of Change, were there to celebrate the uh, inauguration of Meghalaya. And uh, let's see, BK, uh, no, BK Nero, who was the governor at the time, said this is you know, a first that a state has been formed with so little conflict. And it was because Uncle Nick to Uncle Raj and all had gone with my father and traveled around Assam to many villages and spoken to the people, and my father would tell his story of change and how he felt uh, he wasn't going to be um, upset with the Assamese people for, for the way they lived and the way we lived, but that we could all work together and compromise to bring forth a much better result for the whole of the Northeast. And through this change, I, I guess, and I didn't realize it was such a big story until a few years ago, I started getting letters from people in uh, Australia, Jean Brown and uh, Suresh Khatri and a few others said, we want to know more about this story. And I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> I wonder why. And then they said, well, it's a big story. It really happened and this is, the, and the, and, you know, that's when I started realizing it has had impact all over the world. So what an ordinary man can do, perhaps that's the missing clue. As you know, in that song, it says, most of us are ordinary people, living our lives the same thing every day, but ordinary men can do extraordinary things when they let God show the way and do our inner listening, and uh, it's just amazing. So this has really been a lesson to us, and I left J.J. Plateau many years ago, but it's so wonderful to be back and celebrating this special time when we are melting divisions, and I'm sure we can go back to our places, myself to the United States, and bring more of this change to people who are not willing to listen to each other. And I think it's very critical at this time, as you know, I come from a place where there's a lot of change and a lot of hurt and a lot of um, things going on that we, we all hear in the news. And let's hope we can all work together and we need all your help as well for us in the United States that we can you know, help our world uh, become a better place. Thank you so much for your time and sorry I went on so long. <laughs>